Welcome to the second inning of Sports Month here on Tuned In. I'm Josh the Fox Mills, and as always, I review cartoons. No matter how new, no matter how old, no matter the cost. So, I've got a joke for you. Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Wayne Gretzky fight crime as superheroes. Oh. Wait, that's not a joke. Come back after the credits for my review of Pro Stars. Entertainment, have I? Well, I guess I probably should. There are a lot of cartoons that I'll be covering in the future that will be from Deke. Real quick. Deke was responsible for the wacky world of Tex Avery, Hello Kitty's Furry Tail Theater, and Rainbow Bright, all of which I've already reviewed. It was an animation company that started in 1971, was big in the 80s, and lasted about 40 years before finally being absorbed into the company now known as DHX. Like Hanna-Barbera, some of their tunes were good, but most of them were pretty awful. Okay, I resolved this year to try to make this show more entertaining, so no more ranting on history for now. Pro Stars was originally going to air on ESPN, but wound up airing on NBC instead. Oh, man. NBC on a Saturday morning, where cartoons go to die. I kid, but for a while, NBC was the weakest of all of the Saturday morning animation blocks. As I mentioned before, Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Wayne Gretzky fight crime. This is a super tune! <laughs> Pro Stars was a superhero cartoon where basketball legend Michael Jordan led a team of athletes turned heroes to fight crime, help kids, and protect the environment. Yes, I said protect the environment. Ironic, considering that this show polluted the airwaves for 13 episodes. <laughs> well, okay. It's not like this is the worst cartoon ever made. Pro Stars was just really dumb and really lame. Joining the Pro Stars was hockey legend Wayne Gretzky, who not only was the token white guy of the team, but also the team clown obsessed with food, eh? Lastly, we had a football and baseball double threat with Bo Jackson. He is the team muscle, and they always tried to work in a reference to the Bo Knows ad campaign of the 80s and 90s. What's the Bo Knows campaign? Well, quick, do this real quick. It was a series of commercials for Nike, where Bo would do all sorts of things, usually different sports, and stating that Bo knows blank. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. That was the wrong show, but alright. Although the athletes were too busy with their respective sports to voice themselves in the tune, they did make an appearance in live-action sequences before the show to talk about the upcoming episode. I never understood why shows do this. Wouldn't it be better to have the discussion of the show after the episode to avoid spoilers? These sequences were about as lame and clearly recorded in separate studios instead of them meeting in the same room to have these conversations. The theme song was an homage to We Will Rock You by Queen, but Queen apparently wasn't flattered, as they had to slow the show's theme song down and shrink the chorus. Uh, and the theme song also had to reference the Bow Nose campaign. Why, it's almost like it was a popular commercial and they tried to milk it to death and then beat it when it died. The Pro Stars were given gadgets to complete their mission. These were provided by Mom, who served as their cue. No, no, not that cue, the James Bond one. Mom is also a Jewish mother stereotype. Oh, honey, put on your flak jacket, you'll cut your death of bullets. And don't give me any lip, young man. Such a good boy. As a form of comic relief, 
The neighbor to the Pro Stars continuously falls victim to the Pro Stars related misfortune every episode. As if the premise of the show wasn't funny enough, am I right? Sports superheroes have never worked. Ever. The closest thing we had was Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and he was just a vigilante that beat people with a hockey stick. This train wreck full of coin chugs along with the villains, who were just as ridiculous. The only reoccurring villain was Clockwork Delarange, a mad scientist in a reference to Clockwork Orange, a movie that no kid should know about. A lot, and I mean a lot of episodes, are about the environment, like these guys were trying to be Captain Planet. You're not Captain Planet, Pro Stars. I wanted to make this review funny. I wanted so much to make this episode as entertaining as it is educational, but the show is so lame! Forget it! Final thoughts! What does the fuck say? What can I say? I'm not a sports fan. I can understand the appeal, but traditional sports just are not where I put my competitive energy. That being said, the nature of physical sports makes sports cartoons difficult to make in an interesting way. People want to do sports or watch people do sports, and a predetermined scripted show like this makes it hard to be engaging. This might be why most sports cartoons go uh, become superhero shows or go into weird diversions. Ultimately, Pro Stars is silly and only suited for those who enjoy this kind of cheese. Everyone else better served avoiding this foul ball of a cartoon. Next week, I take a look at the adventures of Muhammad Ali. Does it float like a butterfly or sting like a B minus? I'll tell you next time, but until then, stay tuned.